Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Founders Connect. Here we have conversations and learn from the experiences of leading African entrepreneurs. On this episode, we're going to be having a conversation with a recent YC alum who is the co-founder and CTO of Prosper. Hi, Rodney. Hi. How you doing? Excited. <laughs> nice. I like the energy. So we're going to learn as much as we can about Rodney himself and also just about the business or the product Prosper and what they are building and you know how far they've come and you know the things that we typically would do here. So make sure you stay and watch this video to the end. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm PC Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. Hey, thank you for saying to watch this video. If this is your first time here, please make sure you click on the subscribe button. I'm very passionate about growing people and businesses, and I try to do this on this channel. So I create videos on branding, marketing, entrepreneurship, and life. Yeah, every now and again, I will share my life lessons. So make sure that you subscribe. Also, there's a bell notification button. If you click on that bell button, every time I release a video, which is at least once every week, you'll be one of the very first people to get notified. So definitely click, click to both of them. And if this is not your first time, I won't get tired of thanking you and telling you that I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Now, let's get right into the video. Make sure you watch to the end, guys. Peace. So it's very hard to stalk you on the internet. <laughs> I've tried. And I'm like, there isn't much. Can you, like, who is, who is Rodney? Beyond being a CTO and co-founder of mm. Um. So funny story, I actually wanted to be an astronaut. Yeah, when I was young, um, it was a very ambitious dream. I was literally the only person in my secondary school with the crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, I mean, uh, I am simple. I'm a what, simple what, guy. Aside really. simple, what three words describes you the best? Mm, optimistic, mm -hmm. extremely ex optimistic. What of this word optimistic, terribly <laughs> optimistic. Um, Stubborn, mm, very stubborn. stubborn. Yeah, it's okay. very stubborn, and um, never give up. So an optimist. An optimist. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I don't. Um, I don't really buy into like the whole concept of saying that you know you have to always kind of blame something for mm -hmm. you know bad things that happen and all that so i always feel like you know if challenges happen you know it's just another day you just have to keep on pushing so it's a blessing there's also a cost because i don't know when to stop so <laughs> you just keep going yeah, you just keep going yeah what yeah. was growing up like for you where did you grow up what's your family background um so i was born and i uh, had my early years in Sierra Leone. um Does it was French? no i don't funny thing Sierra Leone is <laughs> naturally a <laughs> <laughs> French speaking country, most people oh. make that mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, know it's actually English. Uh, it's an English speaking uh, country. Um, so I was born, my early years was in Sierra Leone. Um, it was, I can't really remember much, really, to be honest with you. Um, I left in, I think, late 90s during the Civil War, the Sierra Leone Civil War. So I left and moved to Nigeria. Um, you know, I, I think I came into Nigeria in primary four, so pretty much did my entire. 10 years in, I actually grew up in Worry, which is strange for most people. I think I'm calm that I grew up in Worry. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in Worry. Um, and then I moved to Lagos, like I think in 07 or so. Um, so I don't know, I think I've really moved around a lot. My sister says we're nomads in my family. So, uh. so it's good. So again, um, Nigeria is a very interesting experience for me. So Nigeria is more home than Sierra Leone, really. Mm. Yeah, but, yeah. And what, which, which of these places, or which of these is your favorite place, Nigeria? I have to say Nigeria because we're in Nigeria. <laughs> no, like um, the honest truth. No, I mean, to be honest with you, um, I, I've spent some time in Kenya, so I actually love Kenya a lot. Uh, but I think what is always very interesting is whenever I have to kind of move around a lot, um, so this is funny, right? I always have issues trying to remember certain things. So I'll give you a perfect example. For example, in Nigeria, we call our um, bus conductors, conductors, right? In Sierra Leone, it's apprentice. In Ghana, it's mate. So usually when I have to move around, I always have to keep on remember, you know, reminding myself because <laughs> yeah, if you say something, yeah, I usually always say connect and they'll be like, this guy's Nigerian. <laughs> so, so I don't know, I mean, I, I, I love Kenya. Again, Nigeria feels like home to me. Sierra Leone, 
it's an interesting place, but I, I mean, aside from my early childhood years, I haven't really spent a lot of time here, there. So yeah, it's it, it's family, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's not home. Really. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, how did you get into tech? Hmm, honest truth. So like I said, I wanted to be an astronaut, right? Um, but then I realized that it was a lot of work. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so, I don't know, I, that, I think at, at that point, um, uh, I knew there were a lot of tech founders who were now, you know, um, setting up like their own space programs and things. So I was like, oh shit, actually, if you have a lot of money, you can actually fly to space without having to go through whatever programs and uh, being a good physicist or whatever it is. So, so yeah, so tech was, um, I think, the easier approach for me um, in terms of like creating things. Mm -hmm. So, um, the passion again to kind of like build things has always been there. Um, and I've always been, like I said again, I'm stubborn, <laughs> so I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't like to follow the rules. Um, in school, then I, I didn't really enjoy, you know, whatever it is that we, we were being taught. If it, if it didn't make sense for me, if it wasn't practical, it didn't make sense to me, right? So I spent a lot of times. I remember when I was in like just three, I spent a lot of time meeting my to be a physics teacher and you know asking him questions around um, helicopters and flying and things and the guy was really like it was like this dude when you come in you're going to be brilliant and then i failed this course and he was like hey, <laughs> you're always coming and asking me big big questions <laughs> but again so i i mean like i said i'm stubborn so i if if i need to solve a problem i'll be passionate about it but then if it has to be with something i'm not super interested in then it's like <laughs> you know, i don't really care yeah. so that's how it is so tech was dead escape for me you know the idea that you could actually build something and you know you could do it by yourself and um and you know you could think of an idea build it and you know and just launch it and people will use it and you know that that kind of it was like the entrepreneurship democracy mm. really so so did you study did you end up studying like um, software engineering computer science in university or did you go the route of studying something else and then got the job or mm. yourself so like what's the when well, inside this is the I don't need to like build stuff. So I, th I think that's a mistake I made. Um, when I got into uni, I should have actually done something else, right? Because um, uh, when I moved to Lagos, I, I did uh, the two-year program at AppTech. Mm -hmm. So it was like a software engineering diploma-ish kind of thing. Um, again, it was a really good experience because again, that kind of opened my eyes up to, you know, web technologies, um, um, desktop applications and things like that. And then I kind of had like a very, um, I guess, interesting passion for web, right? So I drove more into web. Um, but again, I think it's really about, you know, whatever it is that I find passionate and whatever I want to focus on. Uh, so even after Aptech, I actually spent a lot more time, you know, at cyber cafes then. <laughs> I had like a flash drive, I'll go in, you know, download um, sample codes, go home, hack it out. If it didn't work, I have to wait the next day, go back. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it was kind of like that background helped me. So that time, that two years helped me. And then I kind of like just continued building and improving. So when I got into uni, I actually studied IT in uni, um, which was now like a very terrible idea because <laughs> I already learned a lot. So literally, I felt like, according to my mother, I felt like I was smarter than my lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I dropped out, actually dropped out after my second year from uni. Um, but again, I think I think that's a mistake I made. I should have probably no took something else, studied something <laughs> else out of IT because it was it just seemed we were studying HTML like basics and I was already doing JavaScript, so it just didn't make sense. Yeah, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So just before you started Prosper, um, I saw on your LinkedIn that you were this company called Nest Bank. Yeah. Where, what was that? What was that like? Um, so Nest was uh, a consumer banking um, product. Um, so before this, I ran Osusu Mobile, which was like a, a fintech for the underbanked. So it was just taking the concept of Isusu, you know, like everybody grew up with that anyway, and kind of like digitalizing it. Um, it was something I was very super passionate about and um, spent a lot of time like talking, engaging with market women, cooperatives, and, you know, farmers and things like that. So it, it really helped me kind of understand, um, like, you know, how you can, how fintech can really help, you know, um, um, you know, small businesses help them scale up and all that. Um, so um, when we, so I had a partner then at, at Osus Mobile Delapo. Uh, so we had a merger with another firm in Lagos, which um, they were offering like small loans to 
um, SMEs and you know we came together and we're like you know um, we should probably take this to the next level which is consumer banking so we started Nest. So right. Nest was pretty much like um, a so more from that. Um, what other company acquire is social banking or mm, you get no so it was just um it was more of like um a 50 50 split so right. you know um both companies came together putting their resources together and expertise together and kind of like you know have this new direction um so it was really just on the consumer banking side so it was kind of like you know focusing on all digital experience um taking whatever it is we don't like about the current banking system and then you know digitalizing that and making it a lot more better yeah, so that went on for like two, three years? Like yeah, so it went on for, I think about two, I spent like probably two and a half years, yeah, two and a half years there. Um, it, was, it was a good experience, but again, it kind of made me understand, because you know, when I, after, you know, we spent a lot of time building the product and it was fantastic, but then when you're pitching it to people and then, you know, I tell somebody like, oh, come and open an account with us and they'll be like, yeah, so what makes you guys different? I'm yeah. like, well, we have cool UI. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, but I mean, it wasn't really solving like a, a specific need, right? So mm. it, it was a want. It wasn't really a need. And like you know, everybody wanted like a better UI experience for the bank. But people were not really you know like pissed off with their current bank. You know, most people have like I always say, most people have like two or three accounts, right, with different banks. So consumer banking for me, I don't think it's it sucks, but it's not really that bad. You know, our banking system mm. in Nigeria is far beyond even places like Kenya. So that's why, again, mobile money works in Kenya compared to Nigeria. Um, we just have like a really good, um, we're not really good per se, because people always have issues. <laughs> but we have- But it's better than some It's others. better, yeah, and, and it works, you know. So we have instant alerts. You know, I can send money to you now, you get it instantly. Most countries don't have that, so it works. So um, we spend a lot of time just trying to like acquire users and things like that. So, and you know, do the savings product side of things, group savings and things like that. But, I, at the end of it, it wasn't really like solving a specific need. Really. So did you guys gain any traction at all? Yeah, we did, we did, we did. I mean, we had, uh, again, so we kind of now started morphing into um, doing again what we what we initially doing on the social mobile, mm -hmm. which was again going after the cooperatives, um, you know, signing them on top of the platform, giving them loans and things like that. Um, and then, you know, when, when you have this conversation with people, you definitely understand that truth about it is that everybody's an entrepreneur, right? Because, right? um, I met, actually didn't even know this existed, I met um, a cooperative that is um, DSTV installers, I DSTV installers in Nigeria have a cooperative, <laughs> right? <laughs> and aside that also, you know, like these people have small shops and things like that, so, you know, they always require loans of maybe like 50k, 70k just to like um, run their side businesses and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so that kind of now kind of showed me how different the market was. Because again, if you approach someone and said, oh, come and open a Nest Bank account, ask you uh, so what better you have to now say oh you know we don't charge you transfer fees but again it's banking you have to make money revenue is important so uh free banking nah <laughs> nah revenue is important that's very interesting and so at what point did you um or did you guys i don't know if it's the same thing as doing prosper now mm -hmm. so you know what let's let's pivot into this this particular product and why did you think that this was like the better one to do? Um, so, no, Prosper is actually a separate, a separate team. So did um, everybody leave or it was just you that left? Um, what, what happened to Ness? So, I felt like it was time for me to kind of move on to other things. Um, I haven't had a, um, like, a, a, I guess a full-time um, employment. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've actually ever had a full-time employment. I've always kind of built things. Um, so at that point, Towards like my last uh, month and less, I was kind of thinking of you know, going to like the corporate life and you know, trying to just have, I don't know, don't be stubborn or don't, you know, <laughs> don't try to do <laughs> things or build things. Paid. Yeah, just work and kind of get paid and all that. But, um, but you know, a friend of mine, uh, we've been friends for a very long time, um, you know, and we've worked on separate things. So, you know, he, um, you know, told me about it, like, you know, uh, business banking, I was like, you know, actually that makes a lot of sense, right? So, because again, my experience with Social Mobile, working with those SMEs and those um, cooperatives, it kind of made more sense and we going after that niche of market. Mm. And, um, and then again, I think the resolve again was, because again, I've built businesses in Nigeria before, I know the pain that it takes to actually open a business bank account in Nigeria and all the wahala. So, at, when we started Prosper, the first thing that we tried to do 
was simplify the process of opening a business bank account, right? So we wanted to cut that process to three or five minutes, right? So, because again, I, it always kind of seemed redundant, especially, you know, um, when I started multiple businesses and probably I'm working with the same bank and then every time I have to fill in the same KYC information for myself and yeah. so again and all that. So um, at that point, I, 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 it was like a no-brainer. It was like, you know, this is actually a need, right? And you could, and it's business banking again, so it's not like you're doing anything for free. Right. Um, you could always make revenue of it. And as the older I've gotten, I've realized that revenue is super important for business, <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, back in the days, I'll be like, nah, let's just build first and then we'll figure that out later. But now, yeah, it's it's about building a real business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. And so, and you guys got into YC like a few months ago. How how was that? How did it happen? And how would you say YC has influenced your growth um, since since then would be? YC, 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 YC was an interesting experience. Um, so. Um, we where was that was I think we got in like the winter batch, mm -hmm. right? Um, so funny thing, this is this was I think our third time applying. Third time. Yeah, third time applying. So you guys have been applying since yeah, since yeah started. inception. So in we did start up school in 2019 um, when we launched Prosper, and then we applied I think for the winter batch of 2019. We didn't get in, terrible. Uh, mm -hmm. Second time again was the next year 2020. We applied again, we didn't get in, which was sad too. Uh, so funny thing, 2021. Um, you know, we we didn't really think about it much. So it was again, it came up, and we were like, you know, let's just submit it and see where it goes. And if it goes, we'll, if it doesn't go, we'll. um, but I think uh, the most important thing was that we had seen growth consistently, right? And it was easier to plead that case again because um, 2019 we just got into the market. You know, people were a bit skeptical about mm, business banking. Anybody's going to use your service, and even uh, I was. But again, with the early weeks at Prosper. Um, what really kind of, you know, super made me convinced in it, it was again that people were actually submitting it's like sensitive information like the CC documentation right. and things like that. Like, and we were, you know, we didn't do any adverts. We were like this unknown company and we're just online and things like that. So, um, so again, that, that kind of kind of grew from 2019 to 2020. We grew our customer base. We were making revenue. Um, we didn't. We don't buy into the idea of free banking, so, <laughs> and it's business banking, right? So, I mean, we always believe that if you offer, if we build the right tools and services for our members, you know, um, ask them to pay for it, it's not going to be a big deal. So, so that that consistent growth kind of um, helped us and you know made us um, get into YC. And you know, the YC experience was fantastic, to be honest with you. And I think one thing I actually appreciate about YC is the fact that um, every partner has you know started a company before so you're mm -hmm. speaking to founders so they understand the challenge it's not like an investor that does be like man it's not working i spoke to this guy and he said you should do this yes yeah, so they can tell you like practical realities and then you get to also hear from other founders and things like that so that that um that experience is, is very valuable for us and that really helped us kind of like ship and even help us still ship you know whatever the next uh, two three years like, is going to be like here for I mean, us, have yeah. you guys raised here yeah, we have. We have. We have. I can't say. <laughs> That's fair enough. What would you say has been the, the, the biggest challenge so far building Prosper in the last two years? So two things. Regulations, which, <laughs> which is, which to be honest with you is, um, I mean, if you do the right things, it would always be there. You just have to get the right, right license. And, um, but the, I think the biggest challenge with that again is um, the process, in, you know, which you're able to, you know, get all those things done. And uh, second thing, which is actually the first thing, which is super important, is people. Mm. So getting the right people. Um, you How know. many is the team now? So I think now we're about ten, about ten okay. now. Yeah, still over very ten. Lean. Yeah, it's very lean. Um, but again, getting the right people in is the biggest problem. Even with engineers, it is. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, but yeah, I think I think it's really just talent and regulations. But again, like I said, regulations again. You know, if you follow the guidelines, you do what you need to do. I think you'll be fine. But it's really, you know, acquiring talent. That's, that's and, like the and biggest what would you say is the biggest win aside of YC? Mm, member satisfaction. Yeah, I, th I think that's that's that that is actually super important because again, um, being able to grow organically, like we haven't done, you know, we didn't do a lot of adverts and things so that we kind of just focused on. Um, so first few months was let's make the onboarding process as simple as possible, right? We did that. Um, a few months in, we added things like invoicing, uh, business hub, help you manage your customers, 
um, automate the kind of processes that you do. So for example, if someone pays into your account more than two times, we automatically store that person as a customer. So um, the member satisfaction, really. I mean, having people who has been and with us from day one. And how do you guys manage that? Like, how do you measure that rather? Um, so feedback, really, right. super important. We spend a lot of time talking to our members. Again, um, we don't want to be, you know, super alienated from, you know, our product and our members also. So we spend a lot of time speaking to our members. Uh, there was actually a very interesting feature that we added, um, which was, I think, in 2020, mm -hmm. which is sub accounts, right? So we had that from day one, but we were speaking to a customer, I remember one day, and, and she was like, oh, it would be so cool if um, when I create a sub account, I can, you know, select which bank I want the account number to be with them. Okay. Like, okay, actually, that makes sense. So we added that, we rolled that out. So that, that gave a lot of flexibility, right? So instead of you having to, um, you know, walk into a Zenit bank, open a Zenit bank account, go to GTB, open a GTB account, you can just have one single account and just create a sub account and then select that. Or oh, I want this sub account to have a Zenit bank account number or, um, or let's say a Wema bank account number, right? And then that would just work for you. So you still have one control over your full business, but just multiple points of like um, payments for your customers. So yeah, so I mean, feedback from our, cost from our members is super important, yeah. Yeah, that sounds really amazing. <laughs> so how, how do you manage the relationship with your co-founders? Hmm. We, I mean, because you've had other co-founders yeah, before, right? So yeah, yeah. Is, is there a difference in the dynamic with your present co-founders, and how, how do you guys move? Um, not entirely. I mean, I think um, I have been very fortunate to work with amazing people. Mm -hmm. I'll say that, and people who you know, everybody has their own um, attributes and bringing um, mm -hmm. their own expertise into it, right? Um, um, I haven't had any like bad experience. I mean. Uh, I haven't had any experience where, you know, I've had former partners that I don't speak to. Uh, so <laughs> it's not possible. Um, so yes, I mean, always there's going to always be like, you know, some sort of differences and all that. But I think the most important thing is if you find people who are passionate about, you know, what you guys are building. And at the end of the at the end of it all, it's always about putting the business first, right? So um, so yes, I mean, you know, we. It's a family, and even not just with like the founders, it's also with you know employees and all that. Yeah, we have like a very open and inclusive um, culture, you know. So everybody, because uh, again, like I've learned that yeah, someone always said, never be the smartest man in the room, <laughs> right? So always hire people who are smarter than you and can listen to what they have to say. Um, so yeah, so that's the kind of culture we live by, you know, just open and inclusive and. And like I said again, I've been fortunate <laughs> to kind of work with amazing people. So I haven't, I, I haven't had any bad experiences really. So it's good. That's it's a good, good. Thing, yeah. What does competition look like for Prosper? Mm, competition. Um, to be honest with you, we don't really focus on that, right? Mm -hmm. So for us, um, what is important again, and that's again taking like a, a page from um, Jeff Bezos. Uh, Amazon is really focusing on our members. Mm. That's super important for us. So we know that there are 37 million SMEs in Nigeria right now and growing, right? So our aim is just to own that market. So have like the largest share in it. So, and um, for us, it's not really about saying, because we are the only player, that's why we own that market. It's just saying that we build the right products that our members mm. actually want and then we own that market. So. Competition for us doesn't really matter. Yeah, so we we are very product driven. So we don't really, I don't read. That's why again I'm not online. I don't <laughs> read tech blogs. I don't really follow. You know uh, what's new, what's just not. Just focus on your product. Yeah, just focus on your product. Focus on your members, and and that that has helped us. So I mean, it has been the formula that we you know launched with since day one, and it's brought us this far. So you know I feel like as well. it worked. So why why change it? So yeah. So just. You know, I mean, uh, stick to what you do and, you know, as long as you are speaking to the people who actually pay you, right, your members, uh, I think you'll be fine. Why do you guys call them members? I'm curious, like, not customers. Ah, no, 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 no. So, why members? Um, because, again, we want to... We want to help them grow their businesses, right? We understand, like, for entrepreneurs, the most important thing, again, is making money. And they don't really want to spend a lot of time, like, figuring out other things. So we want 
them to also feel you know part of like we are part of your business we're helping you grow so for us the relationship is super important so that's why we don't see them as you know customers paying customers like we're here to you know take your money and just you know uh, get rich off you but we also want you so the thing is for me the way i always look at it is um if you come on to prosper and you are maybe you're doing let's say a million uh, uh in three months or whatever it is we want to help you grow that business to you know a million a week and we also want you to be with us you know while that growth right. happens yeah. right so so we see it as a relationship you know we we see it as like a partnership so you know you have your needs we understand your needs we'll help you build and so we're all part of grow. the same club yeah we're all part of the same club yeah because we're all entrepreneurs you're an entrepreneur we're entrepreneurs so you know we want we want to have like an open conversation with you and kind of see how we can help you grow your business Aside giving you loans, of course. Why did you say aside giving you loans? Yeah, because I mean, most people always think like loans is like the only way you can, you know, help businesses grow. But I think, again, providing them with the right tools <clears throat> and um, engaging again with them. So, you know, we did uh, Prosper member stories. I don't know if you've been to our Instagram where we kind of showcase um, members on our platform you know like go into their businesses um, take pictures for them do like a proper video um, pitch <laughs> for their businesses and all that and they put it up online so i mean that 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 again is super important for us right so again building that relationship and um seeing them grow is important because that you grow i grow so everybody makes money and everybody's happy <laughs> Amazing. My final question, um, in the last couple of years that you've done entrepreneurship, mm. from the Isusu Mobile to NetBank, now Prosper, which seems like that, it's, what would you say are your three biggest lessons as an entrepreneur? Mm. Three biggest lessons? Um, so, make mistakes. Mm. Super important, super important. Make mistakes. Mistakes are experience, um, and that's super important, um, especially if you're if you're trying to kind of get the right formula right so if you don't try you're never going to know what works what doesn't work so make make a lot of mistakes i've done i built logistic companies from transit to selling cakes online <laughs> with happy factory and then moving into fintech and things like that so i think yeah make mistakes uh, just keep building and keep um, improving that's super important um revenue Revenue is video is the new business. Oh, yeah, business <laughs> exactly. So it's not really about just the hype or just saying that you know um, um, startup or whatever it is. Don't don't go with that hype. I think again, focus on revenue, right? That's super important. And um, and I think lastly, again, is product. Right? So the way I like to look at product is um, taking into context like needs and wants, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I always use like the iPod as a perfect example, right? So before the iPod, the need was I wanted my music, right? I needed my music with me wherever I went to. But what was the want? I didn't want to have to have like a pack of CDs where I'm always going to have to move around. I wanted something that was going to be slick, easy, um, and you know, could have like a huge catalog for me. So I think you should always look at the needs and wants, right? So the need is what problem are you solving? Mm. The want is how do you then pre pre um, build that solution to make it a lot more easier. So um, user experience is super important. And yeah, so that's, that's it really. That's it. So make mistakes. Make mistakes, yes, make definitely. Money. Make money, important, super <laughs> um, important. And build a product, then build that, a product that, that people actually, yeah. That people want exactly, yeah, that's Amazing. it. Cool. Thank you. Any final words? Uh, nah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a yeah. question you wanted me to ask you that you didn't think I asked? Or something you expected me to ask you that I didn't think? Um, to be honest, nothing really. Um, again, I'm, like I said, I'm very, uh, very simple. I don't, <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time online. Um, I, I think, I think, I think what is what is also important is um, building relationships. Again, I think that's super important. Um, and like I said again, I've been very fortunate to kind of work with amazing people and build amazing things and things like that. But again, it's about that relationship that you build with people. So aside even just work, just having that general relationship is super important. And you know, I think people should just be awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay, awesome. guys. So just be awesome. Make your mistakes. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, 
make sure that you have, find a way to make revenue and make it early. Make it and early. of course, focus on product. I mean, yeah. that's what makes the money <laughs> and makes the customers actually stay. Thank exactly. you so much, guys, for watching this video to the end. Make sure that you actually click on the link below. Check out Prosper, especially if you're a business owner. Also, don't leave this channel without subscribing. Peace out.